Heavenly Father, we thank you this time. We bless your name. Thank you for our leaders' meeting. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your word will enlighten us as to what to do as leaders in the church at such a time like this, that your word will so prepare us, transform us, help us to have all the skills we ought to have in leadership at this time, in Jesus' name. Strengthen us, Lord, in the leadership. Help us to be all we have to be, all we ought to be, for the growth, for the maturity, for the strengthening of all the members and all the people of God under our leadership at this time, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, Amen. The Lord bless you. I welcome you to our leadership development this day. And I pray that the word of the Lord will remind us again, excite us again, prepare us again, energize us again, to do the work that we have to do or to continue the good work we've been doing in leadership in Jesus' name. Our Sunday scripture is on follow-up and discipleship. And I'm reading to you from Acts chapter 15. Some selected verses. Acts Chapter 15, I read from verse 35. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, and many others also. Verse 36, and some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit a brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Verse 41, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches, encouraging the churches, edifying the churches, affirming the faith of the churches. The apostles were very much consistent in obedience to Christ. They were very much consistent in loving souls and they were committed to the great commission. Actually, as we read from Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, when many people, actually 3,000 souls, came to the Lord, the apostles continued with them. And those converts continued also in the apostles' doctrine. They took discipleship seriously. And they took confirming of the soul seriously. I'm reading here from Acts chapter 2. And I read from verse 41. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that gladly received this word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them them about 3,000 souls just one day with one preaching, with one message. Peter proclaimed the message and he gave the challenge and he made the altar call and invited him to repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and with many other words did he, did he exhort them saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. They thought about it. They understood the message. They accepted the message. They gave their lives to the Lord. They were baptized in water. I was told that the number was about 3,000 souls. Look at verse 42. And they continued steadfastly, those converts. And they continued steadfastly, those believers. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. Look at those people. 
They continued. Now, there are two words there in verse 42. Doctrine, fellowship. But you know, it doesn't say they continued either in doctrine or fellowship. There are many people that will make a division like that today. They say, I love doctrine. Only I don't have to come into fellowship. Other people, you know what I look for? I look for fellowship, but for doctrine, I don't know about that. But you see, those disciples and those converts and those 3,000, they continued in doctrine as well as fellowship. Those converts, that's what we are being told, they were really converted, they were really children of God, and you could tell because of their desire. You could tell because of the experience that are taking place in them. It's actually their continuation in the doctrine and in the fellowship was the evidence they were real children of God, was still evangelizing. In various ways, was still evangelizing, was still giving the gospel out, was still getting the gospel out in various ways. Online, we're giving the gospel out. Through phones, we're giving the gospel out. Flyers, we're giving the gospel out. Distribution of trust, we're giving the gospel out. By various means, uh, through technology, we're still giving the gospel out. And there are people that are giving their lives to the Lord, and they're coming to the Lord. Actually, even in touching lives, it's not everywhere. There's total lockdown. And even in various uh, places now, there is an opening. During the day, we contact people. We go to work during the hours of the day, and we still contact people, and we still enrich their lives the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what a good time at such a time like this to still keep on not only leaders, not only workers, not only members, not only overseers, all the people of God, everywhere we find ourselves, still giving the gospel out and inviting people to know the Lord, to repent, and to have a definite experience of salvation. But then, uh, as they continued, all these converts, what can we tell about them? Number one, uh, they are continuing with fellowship and doctrine. Doctrine and fellowship shows, number one, uh, the sign uh, of membership. They said, we just don't, don't, don't want to get converted and then go back into the world. We want to be part of the people of God. They are continuity. And their fellowship was, number one, the sign of membership. Number two, it was the strength of the multitude. All those multitudes, thousands of people that came to know the Lord, they continued. And that was the strength of that multitude. Number three, it was the step towards maturity. They're learning the doctrine. They are fellowshipping with the apostles. They are fellowshipping with the church. They are interacting with one another and sharing with one another. Actually, it was taking steps towards maturity. Number four, it was their submission to the master's mandate. Their submission to the master's mandate. The Lord Jesus Christ had said, go ye to all the world and preach the gospel and teach everyone, all nations, and then baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo and behold, I will chill to the end of the world. As those converts continued in doctrine and fellowship, it was to show their submission to the master's mandate. Number five, it showed steadfastness in mentoring. Steadfastness in mentoring. The apostles did not say, well, they have come to know the Lord. Uh, they could read the Bible on their own. They were listening to their neighbors on their own. But they were steadfast in mentoring them. That's what we need to do. We need to be steadfast in mentoring the converts that have come. Even all the members of the church. At this time, when not all the congregation can meet together, our members need mentoring. Number six is a strategy for multiplication. Strategy for multiplication. When they are taught, 
when they are enlightened, when they are strengthened, and they know what to do. We're not doing the work alone. We're passing it on to the members. We're passing it on to the witnesses. We're passing it on to the workers. And it is strategy for multiplication. Number seven is the secret of sustained miracles. The secret of sustained miracles. That's how the miracle continued because they kept on interacting. They kept on teaching. They kept on preaching. They kept on counseling. They kept on edifying. They kept on growing the church. And what happened at that time is what should still happen at this time that you who are leaders and we who are ministers, and we who are preachers, and we who are pastors, and we who are overseers, we keep on doing the work at all times, even as we have ever done. That's why we're talking, we're teaching on the message tonight, conserving the saints till Christ come. Conserving them, preserving them, following up on them, and being with them, growing them, making them to abide until Christ comes, conserving the saints till Christ comes. Three things we're looking at in the message. Number one, the conversion of sinners to become Christ's disciples. No one is a disciple of Christ who is not born again. No one is a disciple of Christ who is not regenerated. No one is a disciple of Christ who has not given his life to the Lord. They become converts. They are converted from being a sinner to being a child of God. And they are now disciples of Christ. The conversion of sinners to become Christ's disciples. Point number two, the confirmation of souls in Christ's doctrine. Confirmation of souls in Christ's doctrine. That's what we see in Scripture. That's what we learn in Scripture. And that is what those early leaders, early, uh, early apostles, that's what they did. And that is what we need to continue to do. To confirm the souls of the believers. The souls of the children of God in Christ's doctrine. Point number two. The confirmation of souls in Christ's doctrine. Point number three, the consecration of saints under Christ's dominion. Under Christ's dominion. The uh, dominion of Christ has started already in the hearts of the people that have known the Lord. And we need to encourage the saints of God, the children of God, that they be consecrated, they be committed as saints under the dominion of Christ. The consecration of saints under Christ's dominion. Point number one, the conversion of sinners to become Christ's disciples. I'm coming to Acts chapter 14. In Acts chapter 14, we're reading from verse 1. Acts chapter 14, reading from verse 1. And it came to pass in, in Iconium, that they went both together unto the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of Greeks, believed. They so spake that sinners saw they were sinners, that sinners saw the way of repentance, that sinners saw the need and the necessity to repent. The sinners saw the need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It says they so speak, they so preach, they so proclaim, they so explain the good news that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of Gentiles, believed. And then in verse uh, 2, it says, but unbelieving Jews, the unbelieving Jews turned up the Gentiles and made their minds evil. That is, the Gentiles, that their minds were made evil, affected against the brethren, against the preachers. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking boldly in the Lord. You notice the word, therefore, persecution arose. They didn't run away. You'll not run away. Persecution came. They didn't give up. You'll not give up. 
persecution problem came, in our own case now, it's not just persecution, it's not just suffering, it's not just restriction, it's not just lockdown, there's a pandemic. But in the pandemic, as they did in persecution, it says, they so spake the word, and long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Look at the result in verse 27. Many people were converted and when they came back to the church, look at verse 27, and when they were come and were gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them. And how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. They believed he opened the door of faith unto them. You know what they did there? They gave reports back. And now, nowadays, thank God we can give our reports in various ways. We can send email and then give a report. We can send a text and give a report. We can use uh, various means in technology and send the report. We should still be sending the report of our evangelism, the report of our touching lives, the reports of needs that are met, the reports of believers that have been encouraged from the coordinators to the group coordinators, from the group coordinators uh, to the uh, senior pastor in the church, uh, from the pastors to the various local governments to the region of us here and from the region of us here to the state of us here and then to the headquarters was having reports of the work that is still being done and as we see the conversion of the Gentiles as they rejoice in the early church were rejoicing to come to Acts chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 3 Acts chapter 15 verse 3 and being brought on their way it by the church, they pass through Phenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. That's still giving reports, reporting back. We've gone out and we're coming back, and it's not in vain. We've reached out and we're coming back. It's not in vain. Many lives have been touched. Many souls have been saved. The Gentiles have come out of idolatry, out of sin, out of evil, out of occultism, and out of their darkness. And they have come to the light of the Lord and the light of salvation. And it has not been in vain. And it caused great joy to all the brethren. Conversion always brings joy. When people are converted, when people are giving to the Lord, when people have their lives changed and their lives transformed, and they go from religion to righteousness and to redemption, reconciliation with God, it brings joy. And giving report also shares that joy. That means that everything is not stagnant. Everything is not still. The word of God is still being proclaimed. And souls are still being saved. We're coming to Psalm 51. Conversion brings joy. Conversion, salvation brings joy. And coming back to the Lord uh, by the pack sliders and they are being restored, it brings joy to the church. Joy in heaven, joy in the church, joy in leadership. And we know there's still work to do. We still need to carry on uh, the follow-up and the confirming of the souls. We're looking at Psalm 51, the conversion of sinners to become disciples of Christ. In Psalm 51, reading from verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Put me with Esau, and I shall be clean. That's what the backslider is praying for. That's what the sinner is praying for. I want to be clean. I've been unclean. I want to be clean. I've been defiled. I want to be clean. I've been soiled. I want to be clean. I've been dirty. It says, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the souls, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me 
a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Look at this. Restore unto me the joy of salvation. Salvation brings joy. The joy of salvation. That's what Jesus said. Rejoice because your names are written in heaven. When your guilt is taken away, when your burden of sin is taken away, and when all the condemnation is taken away, when the pollution of sin is cleansed away, when the power of sin is broken, we have joy, we have peace, we have happiness, we have excitement, we have hope. And the psalmist is saying, I straight away, I backslid, I'm coming back, please cleanse me, please wash me, and make me to know joy and gladness, and restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then he says, after I get that joy of salvation back, after that restoration, after that revival, after that renewal, then, verse 13, I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's what we teach sinners. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's what we preach to sinners. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's what we enlighten sinners. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's why we introduce Christ to sinners. Sinners shall be converted unto thee. Look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 19. The purpose of preaching to sinners is conversion. The purpose of revealing the way of, sin, the way of salvation and the good news to sinners is so that they can be converted. But they have to do something. They have to repent and turn away from their evil. And then uh, that conversion will take place. Look at this. Look at this. Chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Do you see two things there? Number one, repentance. Number two, conversion. And repentance precedes conversion. Repentance precedes or comes before conversion. There's a willingness to turn. There's a willingness to change. There's a willingness to repent. There's a willingness to turn away from all sin. There's a willingness to come to the Lord. Repent ye therefore, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When there's repentance and we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then our sins are blotted out. Remember, the remembrance of our sins blotted out. The pollutions of our sins blotted out. The power of sin blotted out. The penalty of the sin blotted out. The presence of the sin. My sin is ever with me. All that, the presence of the sin is blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The presence from the presence of the Lord, refreshing will come, restoration will come, regeneration will come, total restoration will come, and then there's a new life. Look at verse 26. Unto you, unto you first, God, having restored his son, Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Turning away people from their iniquities, that's repentance and that is blessing. It brings blessing upon people. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 20, I read from verse 21. People believe on the Lord and they repent of their sins. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. We're reading from verse 20 and verse 21. And now I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house. Look at that. 
publicly when the opportunity is there for us to have public meeting, for us to gather together, and there's no limit as to whether it's 10 or 20 or 50 or 200 or 500 or 1,000 or thousands of people publicly, we declare the word of God. And if there are sinners there, we'll teach the word of God and we'll teach repentance. If it's a crusade, we'll teach publicly and sinners are converted unto the Lord so that they can become disciples of Christ. But then uh, when the public meeting is not there, there is the teaching from house to house. And the message is coming to you now, maybe in your house, from house to house. If it's Bible study, from house to house, it's coming to you. Maybe it's revival hour, it's coming to you, and it's coming from house to house. Paul the Apostle said, I engaged the people with the word of God with all the methods, public and then private, from house to house. In verse 21, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Important as the two hands of man are important, these two things are important. As the two feet are important, these two things are important. As the two eyes, the two ears are important, these two are important. On the one hand, repentance. On the other hand, faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. What comes first? Repentance. There are people that just say, believe, believe, believe. It goes beyond that. To make a sinner to become a saint and to make a child of the devil, to become a child of God, to make somebody in darkness come to the light, there must be repentance, number one, toward God. And number two, there will be faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That same chapter, let's look at verse 26, chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 26. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you the whole, all the counsel of God. From repentance to faith in Christ, I have not uh, shared, I have not shared my responsibility to declare unto you the necessity of repentance so that righteousness will come in. The necessity of repentance so that redemption will come. The necessity of repentance so that you'll have the salvation of the Lord. Now, as ministers, what do we do? As ministers, what do we do? And as leaders, what do we do? Verse 28, take it therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Lord God, the Holy Ghost, has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood to feed the church of God or the necessary food that's why they continued, they continued in the apostles' doctrine. After they were saved, after they came to know the Lord, we must continue to teach the people of God. We become new creatures in Christ and we show those new converts how to maintain that righteousness, how to maintain that new life, because we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, somebody outside is a sinner, he has repented, he has entered into the kingdom, he is now in Christ, salvation has come, redemption has come, righteousness has come, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, anyone who gets converted at that time or at this time, if any man be in Christ, as a new creature, all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. That's what we instruct the people, the new converts. That's how we were instruct the sinners who have repented, who have been transformed, who have come to the Lord, that they need to become new creatures in Christ. That's why those apostles kept on teaching the people so that their lives will actually turn to become new. First Thessalonians chapter 1. First Thessalonians chapter 1, reading from verse 5. Let's see the converts here. And let's see what the apostles did. And let's see what we need to keep on doing. That uh, with all methods, 
with all possibilities, we're still keeping on and reaching out to those converts so that the converts will be strengthened. And the converts will know how to be strengthened in the Lord and abide in the Lord and abide in the word of the Lord. First Thessalonians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. And in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men, what manner of ministers, what manner of preachers, what manner of leaders, what manner of pastors we were among you for your sake. And ye became, you see that there must be a change. There must be a transformation. And ye became, there must be a conversion. And ye became followers of us. And of the Lord, when the sinners are converted, we shall not leave them in their old ways, in their old habit, in their old uh, character, but now they become followers of the preachers, followers of the pastors, followers of the leaders, followers of the ministers, followers of the Lord. And it says, having received the word in much affliction and with joy of the Holy Ghost, there was affliction, just like this pandemic now, just like the situations now that are difficult for the, for the whole world. And yet, in the time of affliction, in a time of adversity, in a time of persecution, in a time of pandemic, the joy of salvation must keep on being uh, experienced by people so that she were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. From, uh, for from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God's word is spread abroad. You see, their faith was not hidden. People were hearing their testimony, and people saw the change in their lives, and their faith toward God, and their joy towards God, and their transformation toward God, and their new life toward God because of the grace of God was being spread abroad, so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we urge unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God. That's true conversion. There is a turning. There is a transformation. They were not serving idols anymore. Darkness was gone. Idolatry was gone. And the past was totally erased. A new life has now begun. And to wait for a son from heaven. We are conscious that the son is coming back. The Lord Jesus is coming back as he promised. And they were waiting. They were waiting in righteousness. They were waiting in holiness. They were waiting in hope. They were waiting with expectation. And to wait for a son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. You see, conversion is God's work of grace in the sinner's heart. It brings a definite experience, a definite change of heart, and it turns the sinner's mind away from sin and gives him a willingness to work in newness of life. And it creates 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 new desire for true fellowship and it creates new desire in the believer for the teaching of the word of God so that all of us the old and the new the members and the ministers the leaders and those who have just been converted can have their heart and their mind centered on Christ and centered on God and the leaders are now building up the character of the people so that they can be Christ-centered, they can be God-honoring, and they can have fellowship 
and the fellowship we're talking about. Uh, let me spell that out for you. Uh, F is friendliness. You see, when we come to the Lord, the old kind of separation, all that is gone, and the old kind of isolation, all that is gone, and by myself, and, and you're by yourself, all that is gone. Fellowship means there's friendship now, and the new converse knows that there are many friends in the church, and we love them, uh, and want to be part of their lives. They want to be part of the life of the church, and I want to encourage you, and especially if you're online, uh, and uh, you're receiving the message online, link up with us. Fellowship brings friendliness, and then e there is earnestness. You see, those uh, early people, they were earnest they were earnest and they were eager. If we didn't get to them, they'll be getting to us. And they want to be all they can be for the Lord. There is and there's earnestness. There's loveliness too. There's love in fellowship. Without that L, fellowship will not be complete. There's loveliness. For there is lowliness as well. As it says, every one of you, you humble yourself before each other. I honor you. You honor me. I look at you uh, favorably. You look at me favorably. And there is lowliness. There's no pride among us. Oh, there's openness. In fellowship, there's openness. you have any problem, let us know. We'll share together and we'll bring solution to you. You have any need, especially at this time, don't suffer alone and don't be isolated there. Let there be openness. I don't want to tell people my need. I don't want to tell them uh, what you know I'm going through. There must be openness. And we who are leaders, we're following up on the converse. We're following up on the members. Let them open up. Let us ask them questions. Are you going through anything? Any way I can help? Any way the church can help? W, there is watchfulness. That's fellowship. When we're in fellowship, you're watching over yourself. You're watching over the doctrine. You are watching over the welfare of the people of God. Leaders are watching over other leaders too. We are asking about ourselves as there is steadfastness. They continue steadfastness in doctrine and fellowship. We are steadfast. We are not letting down. We are not letting go. We are not loosening up. We are not you know, being at ease because of the situation now and the things we didn't permit in our lives before, the things we didn't permit in our families before, the things we didn't permit in our behavior before, you know, because of this uh, lockdown now, we need to do this and do this. No, we still continue steadfastly. And then there's holiness, that's age. In fellowship, there is holiness. And there is uh, incorruptness. And there is peacefulness. That's fellowship. That's fellowship, friendliness. That's fellowship, earnestness. That's fellowship, lowliness. That's fellowship, loveliness. That's fellowship, openness. That's fellowship, watchfulness. That's fellowship, steadfastness. That's fellowship, holiness. That's fellowship, incorruptness. And that's fellowship, peacefulness. Let's come to point number two now. The confirmation of souls in Christ's doctrine. The confirmation of souls in in Christ's doctrine. And let's come back to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 14. And I'm reading here from verse 21. Acts 14. Verse 21. Confirming the souls of the believers. Brother, what does that mean? Sister, what does that mean? You're a leader. And you want to get into this profitable ministry of confirming the souls of the believers in Christ's doctrine. Look at this in Acts chapter 14, reading from verse 21. Acts chapter 14, verse 21. And when they have preached the gospel to that city and have taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium, and to Antioch. Notice there, they didn't just stay in one place. They returned to number one city, second city, and the third city. We can reach many people, even where we are, through phone, we can reach them, through the uh, technology, we can reach them, 
Somebody in that region, somebody in that nation, somebody in that place, all the leaders can reach out to people, not just people in your immediate environment, but people, wherever they are, if you are the leader over them. And it says they returned again to Lystra, and then to Iconium, and then to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples. They were converted, they were children of God. They were disciples. They wanted to abide in doctrine and fellowship. They were members of the church. Although they were not living in the same community, in the same city, in the same vicinity together, yet they touched their lives to confirm the souls of those disciples and exhorting them and counseling them and teaching them and preaching unto them and enlightening them and influencing them to continue in the faith, to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, they were making explanation to them why this affliction will go through them, why this pandemic will go through them, why this epidemic will go through them, and through that we get into the kingdom of God. You will abide, you will continue in Jesus' name. And your converts and our converts and the converts of the Lord and the disciples of the Lord will continue with you, will continue with us in Jesus' name. Look at that word, continue, continue, continue. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 41 and verse 42, underline the word continue, it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Here comes the word, and they continued steadfastly. You know, when people really love the Lord, when people really understand that they are now changed, they are now transformed, they continued not sluggishly, they continued not sleepingly, they continued not lazily, they continued not, uh, you know, as they are being dragged, okay, we have to continue, still we have to read the word of God, uh, still we have to have quiet time, uh, and then uh, they are really unwilling, but we have to do it. No, they were excited about it, and they were happy about it, and it says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine uh, and fellowship, and in breaking of bread and in prayers, they were excited for the Lord's Supper. They were excited for prayers. They were excited in being in fellowship, and they were excited being taught and learning the words of God and the doctrines of the words of God. Let's look at John chapter 8. What the Lord Jesus Christ himself had said about those who are true disciples of Ace were repent we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet that's not all. We must continue. We must continue. As leaders, we must continue. As ministers, we must continue. And as families, Christian families, we must continue. As members of the church, of the living God, we must continue. Continue in doctrine, continue in fellowship, and continue following after the Lord. Look at John chapter 8, and I'm reading from verse 30. John chapter 8, verse 30, notice the word continue. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. It's not enough to hear. We must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior, as the only Savior, as Redeemer, the only Redeemer, as the Sanctifier, the only Sanctifier. And it says in verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. If you continue, that's Jesus talking. If you continue, that's a Redeemer talking. If he continue, that's the one that has gone to prepare a place for us in heaven talking. If he continue, this is the one truth personified. There are some people that think, you know, I've come to know the Lord. I raised up my hand. I gave my life to the Lord. I repented. I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then uh, I can go to my old life, old way of doing things. No, Jesus said, if ye continue 
in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make me free. And the truth shall make me free. The truth makes you free. The truth sets you free. And the truth keeps you free. It makes us free. It sets us free and keeps us free. Error will bind any of us. Error binds. Error destroys. Error imprisons. Error holds people captive. But the truth emancipates. The truth releases. And the truth sets us free. The word is continue in the truth. John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 9. John chapter 15 verse 9. As a father has loved me, so have I loved you. Look at this. Continue ye in my love. You must voluntarily continue in his love. You must passionately continue in his love. You must against all odds, against all temptation, against all trial, against all situations, continue in his love. Against unbelief, against the pressure of the things of the world, continue in his love, against all the doubts and all the unbelief that may come from the devil and from the community, there must be no wavering on your side. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments, and abide in his love. You will abide in Jesus' name. I will abide. I will abide. You will abide in the love of God in Jesus' name. Remember the word continue. I will continue in the day, in the night, every day. I will continue. Say it for yourself. I will continue. I will continue. I will continue in faith. I continue in the word. I continue in love. I continue in Christ. I will not depart from the Lord. Look at chapter 13 of Acts. Acts chapter 13. And it's what we also help the believers to understand. The saints of God to understand. And the people of God to understand. They have started well as they repented and believed on the Lord. They must continue. Look at chapter 13 of Acts. And we're looking at verse 43. Acts chapter 13. We're reading from verse 43. Now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Paul and Barnabas, apostles and preachers and pastors, committed them or committed themselves to speaking unto them to continue in the grace of God. Isn't that what you are called to do? That you will persuade the believers. You will persuade the children of God. That you will persuade all the people. I'm sure you have them on your list. I'm sure you know how to contact them. I'm sure at this time nobody is missing. And nobody will be missing from your thought and from your, your, your persuasion to tell them to continue in the grace of God. When you call the members, you call the people as a, as a leader, it's not just how are you. I hope you still have enough to eat. That's good. I hope everything is all right. I hope all the members of family, nobody has contacted this or that. You don't stop there. You now remind them. Actually, the major thing I want to remind you of is to continue in the faith. 
and to continue in the love of God and to continue in the doctrines of Christ and to continue in the word of Christ and to continue in the grace of God. Saving grace of God continue. Sanctifying grace of God continue. Sufficient grace of God continue. The sustaining grace of God continue. The supernatural grace of God continue. And during this period, the grace of God will be sufficient for every one of us in Jesus' name. I can't hear your amen, but you can say amen over there. Say amen. The grace of God continue in your life. Look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 1. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? What's the answer? Verse 2, God forbid. We cannot continue in sin and continue in salvation at the same time. We cannot continue in sin and continue in the Savior, continue in Christ at the same time. We cannot continue in sin and continue in the love of God at the same time. If we love God, we'll hate what he hates, and he hates sin. And so we cannot continue in sin and say we're continuing God. We're continuing grace. We're continuing salvation. We're continuing Christ. We continue in the love of God. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? You are dead to sin. You are not continuing sin in Jesus' name. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Chapter 11, Romans chapter 11, verse 22. In Romans chapter 11, verse 22, Behold, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God, on them which fail severity, look at this, but toward thee, I pray, this will be toward you, and toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shall be cut off. I pray you'll not be cut off. And the secret of remaining, the secret of abiding to continue is that you continue in the grace of God, in the watch of God, in the, in the might of God, in the strength and the power of the Lord, in the doctrine of the watch of God. You will continue. I will continue. You'll continue in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 4. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 15. Remember the word continue. Remember the word continue. It says in verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Wholeheartedly give yourself to them, that thy profit may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine. What's the next word there? I said, what's the next word there? Underline that. The next word is continue. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You will continue in Jesus' name. The confirmed soul has assurance and conviction. The confirmed soul is fully persuaded, like you are fully persuaded, and like you are persuading the converts, the disciples, the members, the people of God, members of the church, to have assurance as well as conviction, and they're no more tossed about, to and fro, by every wind of doctrine. He can, that is, the person who is confirmed, he can discern error from the truth. And he is unwavering, uncompromising. None of those things in the world now will move him. He is not moved by either epidemic or pandemic. 
because he knows Christ is coming. And when Christ comes, he will take us to heaven. He abides in the faith. He walks by faith. He sings in faith. He speaks the words of faith. He meditates on faith. He shares and spreads his faith. He is not driven into false prophecy. He is confirmed, confirmed in the truth. He is not driven into false prophecy by the spirit of fear and panic. In spite of worldwide storm, he continues loving the Lord. He continues believing his promises. He continues living for Christ. He continues walking in the truth. He continues upholding holiness. He continues preaching the gospel. He continues abiding ready for the Lord's return. Point number three now, consecration of saints. The consecration of saints under Christ's dominion. The consecration of saints under Christ's dominion. We're coming back to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 23. Acts 14, verse 23. And when they had ordained them elders in every church, and at preach or fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed. The ordained elders in every church, and that's what the Lord has helped us to do. You are an overseer. There are region overseers under you. You are region overseer. There are group pastors and there are district pastors under you. And you are a group pastor. We have others under us. And we need to continue to strengthen all those leaders that are appointed in one place or the other. And we will not allow whatever is happening in the world now to shift our faith, to change our focus, and to destabilize us. We will not allow anything at all to take away the great responsibility that the Lord has given us. And they confirmed, they confirmed the souls as they set up leaders over them. Look at Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 4. In Acts chapter 16, verse 4, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders that were at Jerusalem. You see, Jerusalem was their headquarters. And so they took the word, they took the message from the headquarters, and they went to all the places, declaring unto them the word of the Lord. And we thank the Lord for our faithfulness. We thank the Lord for our dedication. We thank the Lord for our commitment that as the word is coming from the headquarters to all our leaders, our leaders are also taking that from the capital of every state. They are taking that to all the local governments. And from the capital of the local government, they are taking it to all the various places, just like they did in the Acts of the Apostles. Look at that verse 4 again. As they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep. That's the word of God they call decrees because they couldn't change, they couldn't alter, and they couldn't adulterate the word. It was that it was given to them of the word that was ordained of the apostles and the elders, which were Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith. That's what we're doing as we, we leaders are being, um, are being energized, are being empowered, are being established. And then we go to the members, and the members too are being established in the faith. The Lord will keep the church strong in Jesus' name. And then it says, they increased in number daily. We'll keep on increasing. This uh, pandemic 
will not stop the growth of the church. And you will not allow coronavirus to change your conversation. You see, there are some people, their conversation is changed. The only thing they talk about, have you heard the statistics of the world, the statistics in the West, the statistics in the South, the statistics in Asia, the statistics in Africa, all they can talk about, corona, corona, COVID-19. Corona will not change your conversation. Say amen over them. Corona will not change your conviction. The people, their convictions have been changed already. They are not really well taught in the word of God. They say we don't know whether, you know, the rapture will come later. Maybe the great revolution has started now. They're going to inject somebody with something and there's going to be a chip passed into their body and the Antichrist is going to secretly put them, some, put something to them and to Christ has not come, we must go first. The rapture must take place first in my father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, so that where I am, there ye may be also. Don't change your com a conviction because of coronavirus. Number three, some people change their, their commun communion. Their communion with the Lord, their, their fellowship with the Lord, they cannot pray anymore. Everything is panic. Somebody in the neighborhood has got this. Somebody in the place has got this. And because of that, no communion again, you'll be, you'll be in touch with the Lord. And the Lord will be in touch with you. And even if you see 1,000 fall there, 10,000 fall there, it will not come in your life. It will not come to your family in Jesus' name. Number one, your conversation is not changed. Number two, your conviction is not changed. Number three, and your communion is not changed. Your confession is not changed. Your confession is not changed. You have the Lord. You have the promises of God. And because of the promises of God, all things that the Lord has promised of a yes and amen in Christ in your life, in Jesus' name, now your, your comprehension will not change. Everything you understood before, you're still understanding now. That's how you're a leader. If a leader has been swept here and there, I've uh, seen something on the internet. I've heard something somebody said, and they said this one is this, and this one is that. And because of that, comprehension is changed. He does not understand his left from his right anymore. He does not understand that God must take away and he must preserve Noah in the ark before the flood will come. He must take Lot and the family away before the fire of Sodom and Gomorrah will come. He must take the church away, the bride away before the fury and the wrath of God will come upon the world. Their comprehensions are changing. Your comprehension will not change. Because of coronavirus, they don't remember the word of God anymore. I'm going to do something with you now. You see, when serpents uh, uh, pervaded the whole of the land of the, of the wilderness, when the children of Israel were going from Egypt to um, the land of Canaan, the, Lord of, the land of promise, then they murmured, the serpents were biting them, and some of them were dying. Thank God, thank God, the serpent will not bite you, and you will not die. During this period, the Lord will preserve your life. His eyes are upon you, and his face is uh, bright upon you and no corona and no serpent will bite you in Jesus name. Everything will be under your feet in Jesus name. Then they came to, the, uh, to Moses and they said pray for us pray for us because we have talked against you and were spoken against uh, the Lord and Moses prayed for them. I want you to understand something now. Serpents were biting them and then the Lord said raise up a brazen serpent similar to the thing uh, biting them, uh, raise it up, so that whosoever will look upon that serpent, then uh, all the poison of serpents will vanish away. They will not die again. That's why I'm going to use this now. There's corona all over the world, and I'm going to now resolve some things similar to corona, and then uh, you're free in Jesus' name. Okay? I am free in Jesus' name. What are way to do now. What are you to remember? As uh, the corona is ravaging here and there, and we pray for the world, and we pray for every part
part of the world, this corona will come to an end very soon in Jesus' name. Give me an amen from where you are over there. Amen. But now, as we leaders, as we look at this, I spell out Corona for you now. See, compel them to come in. See, compel them to come in. Forget the other Corona. Forget all the other things. Compel them to come in. I'm looking at Luke chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 23. Compel them to come in. That's your concentration. And that's what you're looking at. As a leader, as a person that knows, I need to confirm the sins. And I need to help the sins. I need to allow them, help them to be stable. In uh, Acts chapter 14, verse 23, it says, And the Lord said unto his servants, Go out. Go out into the highways and help and, and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. That's what you to do at this time. We're not talking about this one happening, that one happening. Have you heard? Have you heard? Since it will not come to you, go out and reach out to people. Reach out to people in every way, in every means you can do that. See, that is compel them to come in. Oh, occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Let not the pandemic or epidemic stop you or shut your mouth that you cannot do what you ought to do. What you have to concentrate on is to compel them to come in and then to occupy till I come. I'm looking at Luke chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 13. And he called his ten servants and he delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, tell me, tell me over there, occupy till I come. R is to run the race that is set before you. Run the race. Don't abandon the race. And don't look here and look there and forget that this, you know, about this and about that. Look at this. Look at this. And then you drop the baton. And then you drop the race. Keep on running the race. And as you run the race, you are going to get to the finishing line. I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seen ye also are compassed about, were so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every conversation that is not edifying. Let us lay aside every thought that is not upbuilding. Let us lay aside everything that will weigh us down and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run, run, run with patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Thank God you are going to be there eventually in Jesus' name. I said you will get to heaven eventually in Jesus' name. See, compel them to come in. Oh, occupy till I come. I run the race for patience. Oh, obey God at all costs. Obey God at all costs. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 28. Acts, chapter 5. We're looking at verse 28. This is what we are to be occupied in. And this is what we are to concentrate on. As all the other people of the world are talking about this and talking about that, here is our preoccupation. Here is our concentration in Acts, chapter 5. 5 verse 28 saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God, obey God, obey God rather than men. 
That's our concentration at this time. Obey God and is to nourish with the words of faith. Nourish with the words of faith. If there's anything every leader ought to be doing now, if there's anything every preacher, every pastor ought to be doing now, at this time when people are locked up, at this time when there's isolation, at this time when there is a, a no public a gathering, if there's anything you should be doing now that will take all your time, all your effort, and all your thoughtfulness, it is to nourish the hearts of the believers with the words of faith. Look at uh, First Timothy chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 6. Timothy, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good a minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. If everybody else is talking of uh, unbelief, you shouldn't be talking unbelief. If everybody else is doubting, you shouldn't be doubting. If everybody is abandoning God, we don't know what is happening, and we don't know how long a days will be, you shouldn't be of that mind right now. You should be nourishing up your own heart, your own family, everybody around you with the words of faith and the doctrine of God. And then the next um, thing here is uh, A. A is abound in the Lord's work. Abound in the Lord's work. That you'll find in First Corinthians chapter, chapter 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, abound in God's work. Uh, you don't allow, the, don't allow the pandemic to shut the door for service, to shut the door for reaching out and for extending the hand of a labor of love unto other people. This is the time to arise and this is them to work and this is them to use all means everywhere in any way possible to reach out and touch the lives so people, First Corinthians chapter uh, 15, we're looking at verse 58. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, uh, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, always abounding. Let not corona stop you, always abounding. Let not COVID-19 stop you, always abounding. Let not pandemic stop you, always abounding. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that ye, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' name. A V is to visit the bread Visit the brethren. Isn't, isn't that what Paul the Apostle said unto Barnabas? Look at Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Visit, visit, visit the brethren. It tells us in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 15. And reading from verse 36. And some days after, uh, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit. Let us go again and visit. But I heard over and over, don't visit the sick. Don't visit your mother. Don't visit your father. Don't visit those who are sick. Well, that's talking about physical touch and that's talking about keeping social distance. But you can call them on the phone that's visiting. You can touch their lives by sending something to them that's visiting. And you can um, turn around everything and so that they will not feel lonely and not be alone in their problem, in their, you know, shut down because of, you know, they're alone. You can visit them in various means. And Paul the apostle said unto Barnabas, let us go and visit our brethren in every place where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. See how the brethren are doing. That's be for visit and then I instruct the ignorant. Instruct the ignorant. There are some ignorant people. Ignorance makes them panic. 
Ignorance makes them fearful. Ignorance makes them to search here and here. Ignorance makes them to uh, spread error. If somebody has seen something on the internet, they cut it out and they sent it to this WhatsApp and they say it, sent it to other people. To let them know the world is coming to an end. Let them know this is happening and that is happening. Let them, know, let them be fearful. Let them panic. Don't do that. Don't do that. In fact, have you not read history? In history, 1918 in particular, around that time, there was the flu that came, Spanish flu, that came all over the world. Actually, some historians said it killed between 60 and 100 million in the world at that time, and it reached everywhere. The world did not end at that time. Hundred years have come and gone, and the world did not end. Don't allow people, they're sending this and that, and they're saying that, you know, this means now the world is coming to an end. Jesus said, you'll hear of wars, you'll hear of rumors of wars, and then he mentioned pestilences. Pestilence, pandemic, they're the same. Pestilences. And then he said, and the end is not yet. The end is not yet. We're coming out of it. And so he struck the ignorant. We're looking at Second Timothy. Second Timothy, I'm looking at chapter 2 and verse 25. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verse 25, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If peradventure, they will, if peradventure, God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. As leaders, that's what you ought to do. But if you're ignorant yourself, if you're panicking yourself, if you're fearful yourself, how will you be able to help others? You will not panic. R is to renew your mind. Renew your mind. You renew your mind of the truth. You renew your mind of the word. You renew your mind by the spirit. You renew your mind in prayer and intercession. And as you renew your mind, as you are renewed, then you are able to minister to other members, leaders, and workers. We're told in Ephesians chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 23. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then you wake up. You are alive because now you are renewed. You there is to use knowledge aright. Use knowledge aright. Don't misinterpret Bible. Don't use Bible to confuse other people. Don't use Bible to make others panic. Use knowledge aright. That's a leader. That's how to be a leader. We're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. Uses knowledge aright. You will use your knowledge aright to bring people out of fear and to bring people out of panicking. Yes, you seek only God's glory. Seek only God's glory in ministry. Seek God's glory in touching the lives of people. See God's glory in giving palliatives to people. See God's glory in giving money to people. See God's glory in, a, in a saving the lives of those who are perishing. See God's glory and in making life easy, easier for people. See God's glory and the Lord will be with you. You'll fulfill your ministry as a leader in John chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 18. John chapter 7, verse. 18, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh the glory, uh, the, the glory that of him that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness in him. We've learned a lot today in our conserving the saints and conserving the disciples and following up on the people of God. And remember now the commandment the Lord has given us during this shutdown and lockdown, 
Compel them to come into the kingdom. Occupy till I come. Run the race that is set before you. Obey God in all things. Nourish the souls of the people with the word of faith and the blot out unbelief from the lives of people. Abound in the Lord's work. Visit the brethren. Instruct the ignorant. And then renew your own mind, use knowledge aright, and seek only God's glory. I pray that the word of the Lord will be implanted in your heart, and you'll not be the same again as a leader in Jesus' name. Bright leadership, good leadership, a defined leadership, good, great leadership, and profitable leadership for the people of God through you, through me, through us together in Jesus' name. Let's rise up together now and pray and say, Lord, I've heard your word, and this word uh, to make uh, people have, uh, you know, confidence at this time, faith at this time, love at this time, brightness at this time. Give me the grace to do that. Brother, pray. Sister, pray. And tell the Lord, make me the leader I ought to be. In my own family, make me the leader I ought to be. Among the workers around me, make me the leader I ought to be. Yeah, among the membership, make me the leader I ought to be. Help me to help people to continue in doctrine and in fellowship because that's a sign of real membership help me to help people so that the multitude of the people that believe under my leadership in my state in my region in my group in my in my district it will be the strength of the multitude there help me to make them take steps towards maturity let's get our members matured let's get our children matured let's get the people who are called by the name deeper life let them get them matured so that they are not panicking like other people and they are not fearful like other people. They are not running helter-skelter like other people. They are not sharing something on WhatsApp, on this, on that, that is an error. That uh, even the people that give out the things there before, they begin to recount and say, well, I didn't mean that. I wanted to send it to my private friend. Don't be part of that. Let's uh, stabilize the church of the living. God and stabilize the people of God so that there will be submission to the master, ma master's mandate. The mandate the Lord has given us. Let's, let's, let's encourage the workers, let's encourage the soul winners, encourage the gym people, encourage everybody, encourage even all our members, encourage the youth, encourage our campus, encourage our adults that we will submit to the master's mandate and that there will be steadfastness in mentoring. Mentor somebody. Mentor somebody. Pick the people that do not know as much as you know and mentor them and help them to be who they ought to be. Let there be strategy for multiplication. Strategy for multiplication. What are you doing? In a new way, what are you doing with technology? What are you doing with streaming? What are you doing with WhatsApp? What are you doing with all these various things? Can't you use them for a strategy for multiplication, a strategy for growing the church, a strategy for encouraging people, and then that will be the secret of sustained miracles. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you will be an agent of doctrine, good doctrine and fellowship. Friendliness, earnestness, loveliness, your words will be lovely, your character lovely, everything you do as you influence people lovely. There will be loneliness. There will be openness. You position yourself in such a way that members will be open to you. Workers will be open to you. They know that whatever they tell you, uh, you are going to use it to help them, to pray for them, to intercede for them. Uh, it's not to pounce on them, discipline them, scatter them, and intimidate them. Uh, then they'll be open to you. Let there be watchfulness. Let there be steadfastness. Let there be holiness. And let there be incorruptness and peacefulness, peace in your family, peace in your home, peace in your heart, peace in our church, and then the word continue. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Whatever you've been doing for God, continue. Whatever service you are rendering, continue. 
Whatever touch you have, transformational touch on the lives of other people, continue. Whatever good thing the Lord has placed in your hand, continue. And the doctrine, honestly contending for the faith, for the doctrine was delivered unto the saints. Continue, continue. Let that word be the watch, watch of your life. Continue. Let not pandemic, epidemic stop you. Continue. Your journey will not stop halfway. And now you know you have to compel them to come in. Call somebody. Touch somebody. Encourage somebody. Teach somebody. Persuade somebody. That if they are, if they are running back, if they are going back, your word of love, your word of encouragement will compel them to come in. And then not only that occupy till it comes. Do something every day to increase the kingdom. Do something every day to encourage somebody. Do something every day. Occupy till I come. Run the race that is set before you. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't look back. Run the race. Run the race. This is the race set before you. The race of the Christian life. The race of the Christian journey. The race of the ministry. Run the race that is set before you. And do it with perseverance. And do it with persistence. And do it with resilience. Let nothing discourage you or weaken you. And then obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Pharisees said, didn't we tell you? Obey the Lord. Sadducees said, didn't we tell you not to do this? Obey the Lord. The condition said, didn't we say, look at the condition. How can you still be obeying the Lord now? Obey the Lord at all costs and nourish the saints, nourish the believers, nourish them in the word of faith. Faith is powerful. Faith is powerful. Nourish them in the words of faith. Abound in the Lord's work. Don't slack down. Don't slow down. Don't give up. Don't turn back. Don't give in. Don't give up. Abound in the Lord's work. Visit. You can pick up that phone after the meeting. Visit. You can talk to somebody. Encourage somebody. Visit. You can, what you would have done if you were there physically, do it on phone, do it and touch their lives, ask them how they're going on, and then encourage them to stand, stand for the truth, instruct the ignorant, let them talk, let them open up, that's part of fellowship, and when they reveal ignorance, don't shut them down, don't drive them away, don't insult them, just Instruct them. Instruct the ignorant. And then renew your own mind and renew their mind. And use your knowledge aright. Use your knowledge aright. In doing all that, seek the glory of the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all good things, will be added unto you. Amen. Amen in your life. Amen. Amen in your family. Amen. Amen in the fulfillment of the promises of God and the power, the anointing of God upon your life. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for what we have learned today. Thank you because we know that this pandemic will not continue longer. We know that you are going to bring a stop to it. All your people are praying. The church of God is praying and the members of the body of Christ are praying praying. Oh Lord, I pray, bring it to an end and prompt end in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray you preserve the lives of your people, that none will be swept or the water that is going under every bridge in every community. Preserve the lives of all your people in Jesus' name. Now the path to continue in doctrine, the path to continue in fellowship, the path to continue in love, the path to continue in the service of the Lord. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. Grant us willingness and grant us the steadfastness and grant us the excitement, the earnestness to continue your work until you come in Jesus' name. Lord, grant more grace to everyone. Grant more faith to everyone. Grant more love to everyone. And grant more passion to everyone. And grant more success in your service to everyone in Jesus' name. Keep your people. Abide with your people. 
until we meet again. Lord, I pray your presence will never stop. Your power will never stop. Your goodness will never stop in any one of our lives. Lord, confirm it. And let us, Lord, rise up, everyone, without looking back into service, for the service, even from tonight. Let us rise up and touch lives and reach lives and transform lives and encourage lives and make lives, make people steadfast in the Lord in Jesus. Remind us of what we need to remember and help us to continue until the end. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. The favor of God be upon you. And the glory of God shine upon you. And the joy of the Lord continue ever in your life. We'll meet again until we meet. Keep on in the service of the Lord. The Lord will reward you.